Hey YouTube, it's your girl Shea Vibes coming into you with another exciting video. And in this video, I have a very special guest. Uh, you may have heard from her. It was about seven months ago where we did the other uh, COVID video. Uh, this is gonna. I'm gonna be speaking again with my cousin Nicole Kim Dodson. We do appreciate all the love. We did receive a lot of great information, um, great appreciation comments and likes and things of that sort al along as well as shares uh, of the video because she provided some uh, tremendous information. I will leave the, the original uh, COVID-19 where we discussed that and um, things of that sort. And I had lots of questions because that's when it had really um, began to affect people um, on a whole. And now we're like, what? How many months in are we from COVID, Nicole? We're butts it because this stuff really started yeah. pop March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. We're about yeah. eight months eight, nine months into COVID, a lot of us have known people who have been personally affected with COVID and also some that have passed away. I'm bringing her on the channel. She actually reached out to me, which is really cool. And so we're going to go over some holiday tips, to, holiday tips to avoid the spread or infection of COVID-19. And she's also going to share some additional information. I know the holidays are quickly approaching. Um, we all been pretty much quarantined for the most of the year, but it's holiday time and people really want to spend it with their family, whether that's catching a flight or jumping in a car. Um, a lot of us are going to be, you know, around our uh, more mature elderly uh, family members. So we want to make sure that everybody is staying safe and staying protected. So we wanted to share some information. Our um, Nicole is going to be sharing some information with us on how we can do so. Thank you, Kimberly. I hope um, today as we speak again and we meet again, it finds everyone doing well and continuing to remain safe. I wanted to begin um, our talk today because I felt it was very, very important for us to discuss how we can celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday, gather with our families, but continue to remain safe as possible. So I've been really, really listening in to the experts and the epidemiologists in reference to what to prepare for for this Thanksgiving holiday within this pandemic. And what really got me interested in wanting to learn more and what I could learn and teach others to be as safe as possible is I learned that in Canada, they had their Thanksgiving holiday, I think it was October the 22nd, and right after they celebrated Thanksgiving in Canada, their COVID positive rate went up five thousand percent so they had all of those families gathering in close proximity within their home and the coronavirus rates positivity rate spread like wildfire from people just meeting in the household with their family so my next question to myself was what can i learn and what can i teach my friends and family loved ones and others to help us to be as safe as possible during the Thanksgiving holiday. So some of the tips that I learned include, um, hopefully everyone is not planning, first of all, a big, huge celebration with large amounts of people. And what would you, be considered large in a call? Is that over 10 people or what? Yes, you should not. No one should be celebrating and having more than 10 family members congregating in the home at one time. It is not recommended that you have more than 10. Actually, 10 is too many. They're telling you to pretty much stay home if possible with your immediate family, meaning your spouses and your children, and virtually in celebrate the holiday with your family do a zoom do face do you know facetime with family members and celebrate virtually and do it safely so that for next year everyone can still be here and be able to celebrate and be here for next thanksgiving so let's keep the gathering small secondly so when people enter into your home if you do have up to 10 people. If you're not eating, it's recommended that your guests still wear a mask. I know you can't wear a mask during feasting time and when you're eating, but outside of eating, wear a mask. Another key element, open your windows. You have to have air and that circulation in, within your home 
open and, and, and not being congested and the airflow being minimized. If you open your windows, that helps significantly with um, airflow within your home and hopefully keeping fresh air filtering through. It's been told if you open your windows, it helps with with minimizing the COVID if someone was positive in the room. You're, if someone's positive in a room and the windows are shut and you're closed in, you're 20 times like you 20 times more likely to catch that virus than if you had some windows open and certain air circulating through the household. Next. Okay. So we got a, you know, there's two traditional ways families serve their meals. Some do it in a buffet style or some sit around the table when they pass the dishes around the table. The preference is buffet style. Included with the buffet style, it should be you having just a couple of people serving the food. You shouldn't have everybody going from dish to dish to dish, touching each spoon. Firstly, when everybody's coming to be served, make sure everyone either wash their hands or at minimum pass the hand sanitizer around. Have abundance of hand sanitizer at your Thanksgiving gathering. Hopefully you have someone serve all your guests and everyone isn't touching your utensils and serving. That's a good idea. So have one appointed person serving the food, not multiple people just going up and getting in the food. Exactly. Yeah. They also recommend using paper products, everything disposable, um, your drinks, you purchasing sodas or bottled drinks that you know it's it's it, everyone has their own bottle or or single serving not buying two liters of soda or gallons of juice or anything where multiple people have to touch and pour use all plastic um, utensils everything disposable i mean they said even down to your ketchup and mustard and condiments just as many things that you can get the disposable would be great. Um, That's a good idea, Nicole. I didn't even think about that. Also, if you're sitting at the table, space your chairs out. No one should be sitting shoulder to shoulder at the table. So if you have to get an extra picnic table and bring it in and, you know, kind of separate the family, it's best that, you know, you kind of separate everyone because everyone has these large tables or traditional tables where the family, everyone sits around one table, but they are not recommending that. Let's eat as a family, but let's also be safe. And those are just some important tips that, okay. you know, they want everyone, if they're going to gatherings, to try to get a, uh, a test. But, you know, what they're asking is unrealistic. You go try to get a test. These lines are extremely long. It's only limited places you can go to get tested. And then the test results take two to three days to come back, which is not realistic for most people, especially if you're traveling out of town. You don't have that time to wait to not only get the test and then wait for two to three days to get the results. You probably headed on to your destination by then. So um, just remain safe. Ensure, you know, if you're in a climate that you can have some family members you know congregate on the porch or on the back porch keep those windows open and just kind of keep all all of the family kind of socially distanced if possible and tell your guests to be mindful and still wear their mask especially if you have elderly family members they're our most vulnerable population so everybody's vulnerable but definitely our elderly we would like to protect them and Definitely. our children walk around asymptomatic, so we need we still need to be sure that we are teaching them good practices and good hand washing techniques as well. Love it. And what uh, a good thing you were saying about um, like crowds. I, I know about you know the Black Friday shopping. Um, I'm looking at the document you sent me, and it says about avoid going shopping in crowded stores just before, on, or after Thanksgiving. Um, I know a lot of people will probably do you know, the Black Friday online shopping, but a lot of people, I wonder if a lot of people is going to go to, you know, Walmart and camp out like they usually do, or if that'll still be the same thing for this year. And also I know Monday is what Cyber Monday where it's online shopping, but that's some good points to even think about, you know, like that's tradition. Some people in their families, they go 
to Black Friday shopping after, you know, Thanksgiving. They eat and go to the stores immediately after and camp out or whatnot. This time we have to look at it a lot different, you know, with people still getting sick. Exactly. I, I, you know, my recommendation is this is a year that, you know, you may have to change your tradition and pass up Black Friday. There may be items that you can still purchase, online purchase, and otherwise you want to be here living for the next Black Friday. So I would just recommend not even chancing it going out where there's going to be large numbers of shoppers congregating. It's just not worth it. It's just not because you have some people that are ignorant and not believing that this virus is real. This, this virus is real. I'm sure anybody listening to this this us talking right now knows someone, a friend of a friend or a family member who has died during this pandemic with the coronavirus. This True. virus is real, young right. and old. Right. And, you know, help us to help others. Help us. We protect us and wear our masks and, and do what's necessary to protect others. So I just advocate and say, stay home this year. It's not worth it. It's just really not worth it. And I also see where it says avoid your alcohol and drug intake because that may alter your judgment and make it more difficult for you to practice COVID-19 safety measures. And I would have to totally agree with that because, you know, when people start drinking and talking and laughing and having a good time, you forget about that bash. You know, you forget about grandma sitting there, you know. So, yeah, you definitely want to also, you know, be aware, especially if you're going to be going to a gathering that you don't overindulge and, um, you know, any form of drinking or whatever activities you're into so that will alter you from even practicing or even remembering about the social distancing. Yes, yes, very important. Uh, you know, I just want to add to that. Look at how the numbers of positive cases went up once they start opening up bars and, and restaurants where you can serve alcohol. So people, when they drink tend to forget and then you know you see people closely congregated and talking and they're not following the rules so it's easy to forget if you um are drinking and altered in reference to staying as safe as possible anything else would you like to share with us Nicole? Any? what about the the shot what about the vaccine i mean is there any update on the is that going to be mandatory i heard people won't be able to work probably won't be able to get a driver's license won't be able to travel if you're not that vaccinated so currently they haven't they haven't uh put out any strict requirements as of yet in reference to um who will be it'll be mandatory to take the vaccine so let me just explain a little bit you know when we talked last time i did i said in september they will start talking about they have a vaccine and that was very very true um working in a government agency we found out in october and they start recruiting our our patients at the va hospital to actually begin for the the trials for these vaccines um currently there are three different uh, pharmaceutical companies that actually have made the vaccine. All three will be distributed in various locations. Um, they're supposed to have additional approval and discuss distribution as of far as for December the 10th. First, those that will be vaccinated will be frontline workers, frontline healthcare workers, frontline workers in grocery stores. It'll They're going to consider all frontline staff and essential employees to be vaccinated first. Secondly, they want to protect our elderly. They want to protect those who are currently in extended living facilities and nursing homes because they live in close, in close congregated proximity. Elderly people, we have to protect them because they don't have the means to be able to effectively protect themselves. So they are next in line to receive it. And it's not until April of 2021 where they really begin, they really plan to begin to vaccinate the general population. Right now, again, it's a trial. It's voluntarily, but again, it can become at some point where it will be mandatory. Any known side effects? As of yet, um, too early to tell. They actually offered it to healthcare workers to begin the trials at the government facility that I work. I declined. I said I need to see and wait to see, you know, what type of if you gonna grow fur or whatnot or start barking. <laughs> adverse reactions yeah. come out of it now what i did here is that it's a two um 
it's a two-step vaccine. The first dose, they are only giving you half a dose, I guess, because this will allow to see if you have any type of reaction to the vaccine. And then if, you know, that time from within that time frame of you receiving that half dose, if you do well, then the next dose, you'll get the full dose of the Oh, of so the you have vaccine. to go for two shots? Yes. Wow. I wonder how they will, how will they know? Like, will they put something on your driver's license? Would you get a stamp? Would you get like a, a, a COVID-19 virus booklet? Did you have the, how would they know, you know, how would that be known to the public or known period that you've had the shot? Um, right now, I mean, just like the flu shot, you know, they, it, they so don't. it's not going to be anything special, like, because if you see somebody without a mask or whatever, and they're not standing by, you're like, get away, you don't have a mask or whatnot. They can say, well, I had the COVID shot. I mean, well, how would I know that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know. Is there a way that they would differentiate who had it? Or you no, could just say, I had people it. People get that misconception. Just because you are receiving the trial and you've gotten vaccinated does not mean that you are, you can stop practicing safe practices, you should still be wearing a mask, you should still be so, so social distancing because there's actually different types of this coronavirus strand that's mutating. Like this current strand that's going around right now is much more potent and, and, and is much more contagious than what was what was being spread last spring. So it's not a hundred percent. These vaccines are 90 to 95 percent. So you still have a small percentage and a small chance of becoming infected. Oh, wow. And then you still go home. So, you know, you may not be washing your hands or using hand sanitizer. You just still want to practice because not, oh, you may have gotten the vaccine, but your, your family and loved ones may not have gotten that vaccine and you can still be a carrier not practicing and be able to, to pass that virus on in the home. Yeah, that's good. Um, what about shutdown? I keep hearing that there's going to be a shutdown coming soon and, uh, everybody's buying up all the toilet paper and going crazy again. I know I had went to Sam's like we, maybe, um, it was like last week, week before last and the, and it, the lines were out the door and I'm like, what is this about? And they were saying that people were starting to stock up again. Cause I know it's yeah. flu season too. I know we had discussed flu season on our last interview. Um, we did in April again, that, that video will be linked in the description box, but I seen people going into a frenzy again, a frenzy again. Are you aware of any shutdown or any talks of a shutdown? Well, it's, it's very, very likely that if we can't control this pandemic and stop the spread as fast as it's going right now, that is going to be a mandated shutdown. And I say this to say, so back in the state of North Carolina in September, we had close to 800 patients hospitalized with coronavirus. Today, there's over 1,700 people in our state hospitalized. Just to give you an idea of how fast and, and, and how detrimental this, this virus is spreading and it, it's not in control. It's not. And the only way that you can stop it is to start shutting things down. So when we have this new administration come in into the White House, we, we might be looking at that. But, you know, if it's going to save lives for two weeks, if people need to stay home or three weeks, I would I would I would we will have to buckle down and bear with it. But at least we know after that three weeks, hopefully we save lives and we can start tra start these numbers and start things trending in the right direction. And then we too will have the vaccine that should help. Um, but again, right now we have nothing and people are not practicing safe, safe rules. They're nope. just not. Not at all. Well, Nicole, it's always an honor and a pleasure to have you on the channel. Um, if you come across this video, I'll definitely be sharing this video on other social sites. Um, if you have any questions for her, please feel free to leave those below this video, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. If you have questions for her, I will definitely relay that information as we speak on the phone regularly. 
almost daily. And I'll come back and answer your question for you. Um, but it's always a, a pleasure and a blessing to have her with all of her knowledge. Um, and we really wanted to get this information out. I'll definitely have this video up before the holiday season. Um, just to share some tips with people who are thinking about traveling and being around your loved ones, we want to make sure that everybody is healthy and definitely staying safe. Nicole, did you want to add anything to that before we wrap up? The only thing I want to say is there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Um, we'll be able to live with a greater degree of normalcy if we all buy into the risk mitigation strategies in the meantime, which means wear your mask. Keep your distance, wash your hands, and we'll all get through this together. Remember, mask up, stay prayed up, and stay safe. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.